I'm Jason so I'm going to end on a question that we ask everyone at the show and um, that is um, what would you say are your top three kind of tips for living a, a sugar-free life and it doesn't just have to be nutrition based yeah I think that the, um, the the top three I mean I think the number one would be really to stick to kind of whole unprocessed foods, right? I mean, the added sugars to me is always the big, big thing. A lot of people ask about fruit and I always say, well, if, if eating some fruit is like the worst that you do, that's not that bad, right? It's really all the added sugars um, and, and it comes in a lot of processed foods that you don't even see, you know, like sauces and stuff. You don't think you're getting a lot of sugar, yeah. but you are. So really sticking to kind of whole foods and unprocessed foods is still, I think, advice that we can kind of all agree on. Um, uh, number two, I think, is to, if it's too hard, then just don't eat, right? So increasing the amount of fasting periods, right? And it doesn't mean that you do like 40 days and 40 nights, right? It means that, you know, maybe you cut out a few of the snacks because snacks tend to be highly process because there's you know they're not full meals right it's not like you're getting going out and buying a piece of salmon and frying it up it's just something a snack right you know, you grab it it's a cookie or it's something and it tends to have a lot of these processed foods so cutting out all the snacking is probably the main thing and then um, the, the third thing is like the breakfast the breakfast is the, the, the big one I think because everybody's trying to get somewhere at breakfast time so nobody has time and that's why you eat toast and jam or muffin or a donut or whatever it is it's always highly processed carbohydrates usually with a lot of sugar right and so if it's too difficult to like make some eggs for breakfast or something then don't just go right through the funny part I think about fast uh, breakfast is that the very word itself actually tells you it's the meal that breaks your fast it's not you have to eat it first thing in the morning. You can break your fast at 12 o'clock, right? You can break your fast at dinner time if you want. But the other thing it implies is that you have to fast every day because you can't break a fast if you're not fasting. So it means that what they recognized, you know, again, so many years ago is that fasting is a part of everyday life. It's really just the flip side of eating, right? But those have to be in balance, the time you're eating and the time you're fasting. It's part of everyday life, and we, we've gone from, you know, nothing after dinner to kind of breakfast, which is like a 12-hour fast every day, to like, oh, just eat all the time. Eat until you go to bed, and first thing you get up, start eating, right? And it's like, you're going to lose that weight that way? You really think so? I don't. So again, you know, in terms of cutting out the sugars, breakfast is a, is, a, is a big one, right? There's a lot of sugars, a lot of processing, a lot of processed foods there, snacks, um, I think if you can do that, that's that's that gets you kind of a, a long way towards mm -hmm. uh, getting rid of those added sugars. Mm -hmm. That is their phenomenal um, top three tip there, and I think definitely the breakfast one. I think so many people still think that you know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and I think we've just completely yeah. got away from from really even understanding what it means. Um, yeah. So. Jason, thank you so much for your time. I think this has been, I mean, Karen and I probably sit here all evening or afternoon for you. Um, you have just such a wealth of knowledge. Um, I would highly, highly encourage everybody to go and get this book. It is really probably one of the best that I have read in this space. Um, so um, everyone, I think you can, it's available worldwide on Amazon. Is that Right, Jason. We'll have yeah, I think in Australia it doesn't come out till end of April, but it's okay. available in the UK. Um, I don't know about South Africa. I, I asked no, about that. No, we don't have it yet. But no? you can buy it on Kindle. We can buy the the ebook from Amazon on Kindle. Oh, okay. Because uh, I think it's the same publisher for the um, UK as, as South Africa. It's Scribe, and they said that it should be available. But I don't know when they're Catherine got it last night um, on one of the, the participants. Um, she got the ebook version on Amazon. 
Um, we are always a little bit behind, but I will um, try and find it in the bookstores and post it on, on the site. I did post an offer here on our page where you can click through to the Amazon site and get it now. It is worth every cent. It is absolutely phenomenal. And guess who wrote the foreword?